and welcome to the Clifton Art Center and Sculpture Park on the grounds of Clifton City Hall. I'm Roxanne Camilleri, the director, and I invite you this summer to visit the Clifton Art Center Gallery. The Clifton Art Center is celebrating its 15th anniversary with free Fridays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. The current exhibit, A Humanist Vision, The Paintings and Drawings of Michael Linson, is a fantastic portrayal of the human struggle and triumph that exists today as it did in the past. Our free Fridays are Friday, June 26th, July 3rd, July 10th, July 17th, and July 24th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. No reservations are required. We will be closed on Saturday, July 4th for Independence Day. Michael Lenson, who lived and painted in Nutley, New Jersey, has been called by the New Jersey most important and muralist artist in our time by who's who in American art. His art is throughout the American museums and throughout collections. For more information about the Clifton Art Center, call us at 973-472-5499, and we hope to see you at the Clifton Art Center Gallery soon. Hi, my name is Barry Lenson. I'm the son of the artist Michael Lenson. Uh, we're currently having an exhibition of his paintings and drawings here at the Clifton Art Center, which is a little gem of a museum. I'm so proud to have the show here. So this is a painting called The Walkers that he painted around 1950, but I'm looking forward to going through the show with you and showing you some other works and talking a little bit about my father and his history. Uh, let me just mention the show is here through July 25th. If, if you haven't had the opportunity to get here to see it, I really hope you can. Thanks so much. So welcome to the show. The, the first painting that I'd like to talk about a little bit is this self-portrait that my father did in 1928 when he was 25 years old. Uh, my father was born in Russia up in the Ural Mountains in 1903. 1911 he and his family came to New York. My grandfather was a tailor and they lived actually in the back room of his father's tailor shop. My father worked in the post office packing boxes, doing all kinds of stuff. Finally uh, in 19 28, he won a prize called the Schaliner Prize, which was uh, $10,000 in 1928, which was, I wouldn't mind having $10,000 right now, let alone in 1928. So he went off to Europe and studied for four years. He studied at the Slade School of Art in London, also in Paris at the uh, Ecole des Beaux-Arts, the School of Fine Arts, and this is a self-portrait that he did in Paris in 1928, holding a mandolin. He always played a mandolin. So that's a good first painting to talk about, and then we'll talk to you about some more, too. Okay, the next painting I wanted to talk to you about was this painting, which is called Tragedy at the Pit. Um, my father became, after he came back to America, the director for mural projects for the state of New Jersey, for the public arts projects of, of the WPA, Roosevelt's WPA. This particular group of figures replicates a group of figures that are in my father's mural in Week Wake High School in Newark. Um, it's a good example of mid-1930s social realism style. Uh, what's happening in this painting is a group of figures are looking at a fire in a mine. Uh, these, I believe, are, must be people who are waiting for news of their relatives who are in the fire. So this, again, is an example of my father um, doing paintings that reflect uh, the day in and day out life of working people, normal people, family people. Yeah, a question that often comes up in relation to the WPA is uh, murals of like the ones my father did, which are still in um, Week Wake High School, Newark, also in uh, City Hall, Newark, where he did the history of Newark in eight panels in the city council chambers also did a post office in West Virginia. The question often comes up, the muralist, him or herself, how much was that artist actually in complete creative control of, of the work? Um, and it varied really from location to location. Uh, the murals at Week Wake High School, which this is a, an excerpt from, um, were painted pretty uniquely by my dad without a staff. Uh, the ones in uh, Week Wake, I'm sorry, in Newark City Hall, if you visit them, there's a whole list of assistants who helped him out on the project. 
So it really it depended on the location and, uh, and how much uh, creative, direct creative control the artist wanted to express over the work. Okay, one thing, I think people tend to think of artists as very strange individuals who uh, wear funny clothes and are bohemians and uh, never have families. But my dad, shortly after the WPA ended, uh, moved to Nutley, bought a house on the enclosure, which is an, an historic artist colony there, um, and got married. He married my mother, the woman who's in this painting, who he actually met at a party in the neighborhood. Married her in 1944, shortly after had my brother David, who's also in the painting. And so uh, this painting is called Early Tuesday Morning, which shows uh, my mother uh, darning socks, I think, which is something people don't do anymore, uh, while my brother pops in from the living room for a visit. Okay, the next painting I wanted to share with you is a portrait of my whole family. Um, it's my father, my mother, my older brother David, and me, Barry, all in his studio. Um, this is an interesting family portrait, I think, because instead of actually putting my mother physically in the composition, as you can see, she's in a painting. And this painting actually shows the view out from his studio at 16 Enclosure Nutley, looking into the living room of the house where uh, it was in the family until 1971. Okay. Yeah, my dad, a large number of his works really showed people living life, enjoying life, doing recreational things that they loved. This is one of my favorite paintings of his uh, called The Kite Flyers. When we were kids, we would go down to the Jersey Shore, fly kites. My brother and I, this is not actually my brother and me. One thing that we would do would be uh, what we would call sending a note up to the kite. We would take a piece of paper, put it on the kite string, and watch it fly up to the kite. So this is a nice painting of my dad's from uh, the early 1950s called The Kite Flyers. How many paintings did your father make in total? Um, I don't know exactly how many. My father wasn't very good at keeping records, um, but we still own about 70 paintings or so in the family, and I regularly find out about others. So you think that might have been like 10%, maybe 700, something like that? I doubt there were that many. That many? Oh. Yes, maybe <laughs> four or 500. All right. My father was very good at painting, but not very good at keeping records about where things went after they were sold. Right. Okay, yes, go ahead. <laughs> okay. My father, around the time of the nuclear bomb development and H-bomb in the late 1940s and early 1950s became very concerned about the future of mankind and what was going to happen to all of us with the proliferation of nuclear arms. So he painted a few paintings that had to do with H-bombs and nuclear bombs. And this is one of them. This one is called Expulsion. And what he did in this painting was to show Adam and Eve being thrown out of the Garden of Eden which of course we all know from uh, the Bible, but what's driving them out is a nuclear blast. So uh, it was a way of juxtaposing two different events or two different uh, themes from very different times to uh, make a statement about his fear of uh, the, the future of mankind. Let me ask a question. Please. How's the upkeep on something like this, this painting? This is an original painting? Yes. And how is it kept up? I mean, do you, do you have a special place that you would keep these when not an exhibit? Uh, ultraviolet light or whatever? How, how is it taken care of? Okay. Yep. There are paintings that remain on display, like in, in my house or my brother's house, tend to be pretty solid and not deteriorate. Um, Paintings that we're unable to keep on display in our house, we store at a fine arts warehouse in Jersey City, New Jersey, called Hahn Brothers. Mm -hmm. It's a huge old pre-war concrete warehouse that really is fireproof and climate Midi controlled. controlled right. Yeah. Occasionally, um, some paintings require a little bit of cleaning or attention, uh, restoration, and so um, that's something that has to be done from time to time before something can be put on display. Right. Okay, what do you okay. got here? Yeah, my, my father always felt a very great affinity for people who were going about their day in, day out lives, working jobs, earning a living. Um, this is a very lovely painting just called The Builders. Um, when we were growing up in the enclosure in Nutley, there was actually a house next door that was being built while we were living there. And 
my father uh, took some sketches of the builders who were making it and created this composition showing uh, people building a, building a building and at the same time interacting with this very nice little composition of kids down in the corner. Um, I think it just shows a lot of my father's uh, humanist concern, love of people, um, love of realist situations at a time when um, the American art scene was turning towards abstractionism and everything was squiggles and lines and all white canvases and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, my father refused to do that. My father always painted people. Um, he always thought that art was about people and ideas and the, the real lives of real people. Did you guys ever, um, uh, how would you say, uh, uh, have it uh, copied and make prints or, or you know, so many runoffs and all that kind of thing going on? No, not really. Although it's funny, I was just talking to Roxanne because there's a website now that's actually taken some some of my father's paintings and you can buy reproductions of them online and they didn't actually get permission. Right. So I don't know what to do about that. Um, I guess you'll have to find <laughs> out about that. I guess so. Yeah, but there's a, you know, there are certain artists that come in here, they will sell prints, mm -hmm. they will supervise the color uh, sure. correction, sure. and they will only make, you know, 50, you know, not whatever. Yeah. And I was just wondering if you guys were doing any of that. No, there's, there's one company um, which is called Request a Print, and there's one museum that has some of my father's paintings, and they asked me if it was all right with me if they make some of those available as, uh, to be ordered, ordered through, as reproductions through Request a Print, and I told them that was fine, um, but we don't actually uh, sell and market right. copies. Okay. Hey. In 1968, as we all know, the Reverend Martin Luther King was assassinated. Um, my father actually went into his studio in the days following his killing and did this painting, which is called In Memoriam. Um, it represents a group of people having a memorial service in the memory of Dr. King. Um, this painting is owned by the Nutley Museum and Nutley Historical Society. Somebody donated it to the museum. I don't even know who, but it's now in a permanent collection there. And there, where in Nutley? Oh, it's on uh, Church 65 Church Street in Nutley, New Jersey, just up the hill from the high school. Oh, okay. We have a beautiful museum in Nutley, just as Clifton has this beautiful museum. How would you like this? What's this? Uh, some of these right here. <laughs> okay, this is another painting called, this is called Afternoon at Cape Cod. My father had a great love of uh, going to the beach, just like everybody who lived in New Jersey loves to go to the beach. Um, this, however, is a beach in Cape Cod. So you can see some shells, feathers, things that wash up on the beach, and uh, an artist here. It doesn't actually look like my father, but there's an artist with a, with a canvas he's working on and a group of people just enjoying a day at the, at the shore. What shore did you go to in New Jersey? We went to Ortley Beach every summer. Oh, okay. Sounds like fun. Yeah, it was great. Okay. I should, me I should mention, too, that this is an acrylic painting that my father did. About 1960, uh, he changed over from oils to acrylics. Uh, he really liked the speed of, with which they dried. It was a challenge for him to, uh, to work with the medium because he really couldn't make any mistakes. This is a nice example of a fairly late acrylic of my dad's from the late 1960s. He died in 1971, so mm -hmm. we're getting towards the later years here. Okay, and the uh, canvases, I guess, were just standard canvases he, he would just get? Yeah. And, um, well, I guess the oil, you could push it around a little bit, but with the other, would be kind of rough. Yeah. 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 One thing that I, growing up in my father's household was really a wonderful thing, because it was almost like growing up in an Italian Renaissance studio. I would make frames with my dad. I made this frame. Actually, I made this frame just like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But my father taught me how to make frames, how to stretch canvases, how to prime canvases, all kinds of stuff. So I was in there trying to help out to the best of my ability. What about actually uh, applying something to the canvas? No. No, <laughs> OK. <laughs> no. I could tell you a story about that. Sure, go ahead. OK. Yeah, my father uh, at some point decided maybe it would be fun to see uh, if he could teach me to draw something. 
So he took a little, a little plaster ball and he put it in the middle of the table and uh, gave me some paper and a pencil and walked away for a while. And he came back in about a half hour and I painted the ball and then I was down like six inches from the ball coloring in the surface of the table. And he said to me, um, you know, you don't have to draw the whole table, you just have to draw the ball. So I think that was the last drawing lesson I ever had. I think at that point he concluded that I was better at making frames and uh, priming canvases than that. 